feel like we've overcomplicated taking pictures, trying to force a vibe or a feeling that really isn't there, or maybe just avoiding the whole process in general because of how cringe it all sounds. But the truth is, if you're trying to take better pictures, the most important thing to do is to create the vibe. What is the vibe you may ask? The vibe is how you want to feel when you take a photo. Which persona are you going for? Once you have this down, we can go into specifics. Step 1. Get comfortable in front of a camera. No matter how photogenic you are, no matter how you're always ready for camera, I feel like sometimes it could get overwhelming just having a camera like being pulled in front of you. I don't even talking about this being like no celebrity type thing, but like when your friends just like pull a camera in front of you and expect you to like look a certain way, be a certain way, make a certain face, like it could be very overwhelming. Especially for someone who isn't used to having cameras just like thrown in front of their faces. And that's why I say like start getting comfortable in front of your camera. Like pull up your camera at random times and just like record yourself doing stuff or just like take a random picture of yourself like out of the blue and just like sometimes just have your camera up and just be looking at yourself like i know it sounds vain honestly like now that i speak it out loud it sounds very vain but a little vanity ain't hurt nobody you know so that's what i suggest honestly the more often you do it the more used to the camera you get step two Learn your angles and play around with your facial expressions. Your picture should never be like one spot or like one particular angle. It should never be that. Like you should play around with your angles. With this, I definitely want to speak about good sides and bad sides. There is no such thing as a good side or a bad side, babe. If I'm being honest with you, like that's why you need to practice a lot when it comes to this. Like you have to practice your angles to so, like get used to taking selfies and upper angle, lower angle, left angle, right angle, side angle. Like you have to be on your zoom. Make sure that every face you make, every side you are on is always giving, you know, because like if you're taking a group photo, you never know what side you're going to be on. So you always have to be prepared for whatever side you're going to be on and make sure that whatever side you're on, the look is still going to eat. You feel me? Another thing you need to know about is your facial expressions, okay? All your pictures cannot all be smiling. You cannot always be RBFing. You cannot always be mean mugging everyone. You have to switch it up. Keep things interesting. You could do a little tongue out. Or you could have a little smiley face. You could have a little mean mug. You could have a little like model moment. Figure out what works for you. Like what makes you feel the most confident? I feel like that's the most important thing when it comes to like learning your angles and learning your facial expressions. Step three. Figure out your signature pose. What positions are comfortable for you? What positions do you eat on any side? These are all important when taking pictures because you always want to look your best in every picture that you have out there. You know, like you don't want to have this like one picture where it's just like, there's no going back. For me, I figured out that when I have a leg pop on either side, I feel most confident. The pictures always come out eating. Like, what is your signature pose that you could do with any outfit, anyhow, whatever you have that pose down pack? Step four, get at least three to five go-to poses that are guaranteed that girl approved. Besides your signature pose, you need to have at least three to five that girl approved poses that you just know that no matter what is going on, if they say another style, another style, and there's only so many times they will say another style, my darlings. It's like you have that, that your one signature pose, but like if you want to have like multiple pictures or they're asking you to take like multiple pictures, you have like different poses for those pictures, but you know that every single one that you take is still gonna eat okay last step i would say is always stay camera ready never be in a situation where you are looking crazy okay there's no such thing as oh you don't need to overdress always overdress it's better for you to be overdressed than to be underdressed and then they're taking pictures and you're there just looking crazy okay so now we figured out the basics of how to take pictures right and i'm going to break it down into how to take better pictures for IG. Aesthetically pleasing photos that just look like they came straight off of a Pinterest board. There's a couple of things that we need to understand, okay? The most important thing is the vibe. You can't force a vibe when you're trying to do IG, okay? Because if you force the vibe, it's not gonna hit and it's just going to be a waste of outfits. It's going to be a waste of location is going to be a waste of a lot of things and a waste of your time to be honest i feel like when it comes to ig and taking those aesthetically pleasing photos you have to do it in the moment like you have to see everything as an opportunity but i mean i'm not saying that like just see everything as an opportunity but also like enjoy the moment but like also see it as an opportunity to get like a cute little pic like let's say you go to the grocery store right you have a cute outfit on like i said previously always stay camera ready you have a cute outfit on and then there's this aisle that just gives you happy feelings and just gives you happy energy whip out your camera take a couple of pics see what sticks 
boom like you didn't force nothing you didn't come back and be like no i'm going to wear this outfit i'm going to do this 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 and i'm going to do it your outfit matched the vibe of the place and you were in the moment and you took the pictures boom bam pow you have an aesthetically pleasing photo the truth with ig is there's no aesthetic really i feel like when you actually see your favorite influencers pages it's just them living their life right and in your head it seems oh my gosh this is so aesthetic oh my gosh this is this what you have to do first is to put yourself in places where you get those aesthetics that you want from your favorite influencer now if your favorite influencer is someone who likes to go to the coffee shop look in your area and find like very aesthetically pleasing coffee shops for me personally garage picks and just like picks behind like blank walls i'm over it personally like it doesn't give the aesthetics it's supposed to give i mean i could see a brick wall but like let there be some dimension let there be some angle like let's not just be straight up like this like let me see something that's making the photo interesting you know let me actually break down how to actually get those aesthetically pleasing photos okay i already discussed first that we have you could just do it spur of the moment get your pics keep it pushing but if you are going to plan stuff if you are going to break it down and be like okay this specific day we're going to get pictures we're going to do this at this specific time then i guess these are the steps for that so step one content batch always pick a time pick a location when are you going out to take those pictures what is the the lighting going to be like when you go outside to take those pictures how are you envisioning yourself taking those pictures what inspiration do you have for those pictures honestly with content batching i want to say be very honest with yourself don't pull out six outfits hoping they're going to get pictures in all six outfits if you really cannot do it step two depend on no one or get a content creator friend right i would love a content creator buddy like someone i could always record content with but i think with that there's also disadvantages to it the person also has to be interested in content the person also has to like taking pictures and the person also has to want to be there okay because if they don't want to be there they're not going to do the best job they can they're probably just going to do something just to get it done and keep it pushing and that could be very frustrating like if you have someone who doesn't necessarily care about content creating content for you like girl it's a lot and i feel like with having a content creator but you could be like oh i don't want to create content because my friend isn't available today and that just creates excuses where it prevents you from being consistent and that's why i definitely will always go for taking pictures solo and doing your content day solo and i'm even going to come here and like force anyone to be like no you have to go take pictures outside by yourself with your tripod and lens buddy like no because it is a journey being able to take your tripod out and going outside to be judged by people okay now if you're at that point where you're ready to pull out your tripod and take those pics because you could care less about anybody else in the world welcome okay i suggest getting a solid tripod and lens buddy okay lens buddy is your best friend i've heard so many people talk about like remote clickers or whatever but i just feel like if you're trying to flow with the vibe flow with the place having a remote clicker isn't helpful because you have to be very conscious of the clicker and make sure it's not showing in the pictures and honestly i just think that's a lot like you're worrying about not doing too much in the picture you're worrying about the picture not being forced and you also have to worry about you holding the clicker and then showing the picture it's a lot we love lens buddy for that like it just allows you to just do you i like it a lot but one thing you should know about lens buddy is if you're in good lighting you know your face is clear everything is clear it looks perfect then you could have a shorter timer right but if the lighting isn't that great then you need longer time for the light to get into the camera so they can actually like pull out the best light for your pictures okay so little side note okay your next step is plan everything and i know people have said you should find your location and then find an outfit to match it but me personally that isn't feasible for me because i live in texas and there's so many highways and so many roads like it's not like a city feel where you could walk around and be like oh my gosh this place looks cute i'm going to come back here and take pictures it's not like that like you have to drive so it just depends on where you live like if you live in like a city kind of vibe area like new york or philly then you could walk around and see places that look cute and go take your pictures there, you know, pick an outfit that matches the vibe. But if you have, like, if you live in a, like, larger city that's, like, far away from things, then I would suggest you picking an outfit and hoping it matches the vibe. Like, have, like, a theme of what you want. So, like, you know, whatever outfit you pick, you're like, okay, I feel like this outfit, I want it to be, like, a coffee shop vibe right or i want it to be like a certain type of color vibe and then we're going to go on tiktok and search or go on instagram and like search for this spot and like kind of see what comes up you know 
that's what I usually do. And I feel like that has helped me a lot. And most of the time, I just be driving. Like, yes, it's going to cost you gas. But, like, I just really just be driving and, like, hmm, like, this will look so cute in this location. Boom, bam, bam. And there's so many hidden gems. So, when you drive, it allows you to, like, find those hidden gems. Because you're like, damn, like, I didn't know this was here. Or, ooh, that looks cute. Like, this will go really well with the outfit. This will go really well with the vibe. Boom, bam, pow. Like, you know? So, I that's what I suggest for that. And now when it comes to outfit, hair, makeup, all of that stuff, like, girl, pick your outfit. Try the outfit on. Don't just, like, throw outfits on the bed and hope it works out, girl, because 99% of the time, it doesn't work. You have to, like, wear that outfit, see the vibe, practice the poses, arrange your hair, have, like, an idea of what the makeup is gonna look like, how everything's gonna eat, before you go out there and say you wanna go and take pictures, okay, babe? Now, when it comes to taking the pictures, right, when you get to the location, you're there, you're taking the pictures, you're feeling a little awkward, people are there, you don't know what to do, always practice poses before you leave the house. Like, have the poses you're going to try out, have your signature poses, have your that girl approved poses, play around with your facial expressions, play around with the objects, like, with your shirt. Like, if you're wearing a skirt, play around with the skirt. If you're wearing, like, a like a pair of pants like adjust the pants like you know if you have a hat like just have your you know play around with what you have on hand that usually helps a lot with like candid photos or just like getting like different perspectives of the photos because if you only have your go-to photos it's not interesting for the feed but if you have things that are just like you know have objects that you could play around with like if you go to a coffee shop order a coffee and then just like you know take pictures of you like drinking or you just like smiling with it or just like sipping your tea or something like you know like, it doesn't always have to be forced. Like, you're doing a particular thing. Like, let's it be free. Like, let's it flow, you know? Like, and I think those make the best photos with IG. After you're done taking your pictures, another, like, super important thing is editing and, like, figuring out what goes with what on social media, especially with IG. When it comes to editing, right, I don't really have that much experience because, like, 99% of the pictures I take, like, 99% of my pictures that I take, I don't really edit them the only times i edit is when i need to like remove something from the background or if i need to like take something out of the background or like move someone away or something like that like that's the only time i really edit or if the lighting wasn't that great and i just need to like brighten it up a little bit that's what i do so i would say do that and then before you post on your ig always put it in a preview the app i use for mine is preview where i put all the pictures i'm going to post on my ig you want to know why your favorite influencers page is so aesthetic they never post a picture when they take the picture they put in in their preview or put it in this their layout to see if it matches the aesthetic of their whole page before they post on social media and if it doesn't match the vibe then they don't post that picture on social media or they switch the picture for another one that's really it my girls i really hope this was helpful i can't wait to see you guys in my next video but yeah see ya bye